that I'm going to be talking about the use of automated data collection systems in public transport to improve performance overall. Mm -hmm. I'm referring to automatic vehicle location systems, which are principally for bus systems based on GPS, for uh, rail systems based on train tracking uh, through the control uh, logic, automated fare collection systems, the Charlie card here, here in, in, in Boston, the, the Oyster card in London, the Octopus card in, in, uh, in Hong Kong, um, which are becoming fairly ubiquitous, and automatic passenger counting systems, which come in a variety of forms. The, the principal offline functions that these data can help support are service and operations planning, and the second is performance measurement. And those are principally involved in reporting to government how effective your services have been, how effective the investments government has made in, in your services have been. The reporting against the operations plan, how well did you perform compared with what you, you, you hoped and expected to deliver. And also looking at measures of service from the customer viewpoint. In terms of the real-time functions, the two major ones that uh, I'll refer to uh, are, are the service an operations control and management function, uh, which is deals with the deviations from the operations plan that occur through major variant variants from what you're expecting, either on the on the supply side or on the demand side. And secondly, and at least as importantly, customer information. On the demand side, if you provide certain information to customers, how will they respond to that information? And on the supply side, if you take certain actions with respect to a vehicle, how will that affect the performance of the system? There are three examples in London I want to talk about briefly. The first one is to estimate the origin destination matrix for public transport users. If it's a bus route, you can use time matching if you don't have the, the actual location <coughs> at which the tap occurred. We're interested in an aggregate picture. We're using the disaggregate data to form the best possible view of what the aggregate travel behavior on the, on, the, on the system is. To summarize what we're doing here is we infer the start and end of each trip segment for individual AFC cards. So that's forming the trip segments. The second step is to link those trip segments into journeys complete origin destination journeys on the public transport network using a set of heuristics. The third step is to integrate the individual journeys into a complete seed origin destination matrix by time period, the AM peak. And then we need to expand the seed matrix to represent all travels. For London in rail, there are six million um, fare transactions, oyster fare transactions per day, which represent, since they have tap off, that's about three million passengers per day, about twice as many bus riders as, as, as rail riders in London. Uh, the second example is reliability metrics. It may mean different things to different people, but reliability is always important. And one of the critical things about these automated data collection systems, it really enables us to estimate reliability for the first time. So a lot of what we've done in London is focused on how we measure reliability and try and take more the customer's perspective or the passenger's perspective than the, than the operator's perspective. On buses, Typically, we have high frequency service, headways of 10 minutes or less. We can look at the waiting time. We can look at the in-vehicle time. We, we can get all sorts of attributes for individuals we can aggregate to represent the overall performance from a reliability perspective as the customer sees it on the system. For the underground, most headways are three minutes, four minutes, something like that. We can use uh, the tap-in and tap-out times to estimate the journey time distribution between a particular origin destination pair. And this reliability buffer time might be the time that, that a customer would be having to allow because of the unreliability of the service. On the bus, you tap on, but you don't tap off. So the strategy we, we used is to use trip chaining to infer destinations for all possible boardings and use the automatic vehicle location system in London called iBus to estimate uh, the average passenger waiting time based on a random arrival <coughs> assumption. The third and final example uh, I'll give is the attempts to, to estimate train loads. Uh, ultimately, we'd like to be able to estimate these in real time. So the conclusions on this, it's realistic to measure reliability now with automated data collection systems. It's quite realistic in the foreseeable future to do real-time estimation of, of train loads. There's a lot of potential for future research in this area.